And now we're going to begin one of the most exciting parts in hacking. We're going to be looking at the different phases that we use in order to exploit systems. Now these aren't always going to be followed in exactly the same order. We can move it around in order to fit the organization and their security policies. The methodologies in an expanded format, we have first discovery and reconnaissance. This is when we're actually collecting information about the target network that we're looking to gain entrance into. Next, we're going to go into scanning. Scanning is us finding legitimate hosts or routers, physical devices that have IP addresses on those networks. Then we're going to go into enumeration. Enumeration is us getting a little bit more granular in our attack. We're looking for services, we're looking for users, shares out on that network, different resources that can become points of entry for us. Penetration, actually using the information, the services, the operating system weaknesses in order to gain control. This is where the exploits really come into play. Elevation, we may not have been executing our first attack using administrator privileges or super user privileges. So we're going to go in there and escalate our authority to become the all-powerful accounts. Next, we'll actually modify the data, destroy the data, or take the data and do something with it. This is Pilfer. Pilfer is us illegally obtaining information, modifying it, or just even observing it. Moving on to expansion. Expansion is when we start to grow beyond the boundary of just a single system and to affect other parts of the network. It could be the directory services, it could be other network devices, but we're not just going to be self-contained into one system. Now these are interchangeable as I said before. Finally we have housekeeping. Housekeeping, we're going in there, we're going to be covering our tracks, putting in either malware, backdoor accounts that we can use in order to regain entrance to that network later on at our choosing. Okay, so let's go into great detail and examine the discovery and reconnaissance phases. One of the first parts that we have in discovery and reconnaissance is footprinting your target. We want to go out there and find just information about their networks. Are they using dial-up networks? Are they using wide area networks? Do they have VPNs that are being used and extranets? Also, we want to find out what network IDs they have publicly available. All of this information is readily available and we're going to talk about what are the methods that we can employ in order to find out what networks an organization may own or be borrowing. We can easily obtain this from using DNS zone information. Most companies today need to preserve a public storefront or web presence for their companies. In order for them to be able to logically associate their names with their company name, they map these into DNS. DNS, simply put, is host names, a friendly human name, being mapped into an IP address. And we can search this and really call out information that's used within our attacks. Network documentation. You'd be surprised at where companies store information about their networks. Some of it may be on their own website. Other parts uh, you can find through InfoWeek or magazines where they actually work along with a, a magazine in order to publish a working document of their networks. It's amazing what you'll find in these magazines and how much information that they've actually shared with these companies and made public. Determining our network scope is really going in there and looking at the possible point of entries. What are the doorways into that network? We've got dial-up, wide area network, VPN. What technologies are they using in order to get their clients, vendors, users communicating and sharing information. Remember that data is really the heart of most companies and their most trusted information is what makes them valuable and what they truly keep in their secured stores in their networks. Determining the network scope allows the attacker to identify possible points of entry into that network. We could be using dial-up or WAN in order to 
connect remote offices or have a mobile sales force getting and sharing information through dial-up sessions. So even though today we find that most people are trivializing dial-up access, it's still very necessary in today's corporate networks. Dial-up is still very important and becomes an Achilles heel. Also, LAN access. Not only just your standard Ethernet technologies that are wired, but also wireless today is under a lot of scrutiny for different security insufficiencies that it has. CAN or campus area networks, where we're growing beyond just a single Ethernet switch router configuration, multiple buildings may be used in order to combine those systems into one complete network and share information. We'll actually use a campus area network design within our internal attack as we illustrate this later on. Into scanning, we find that after we're able to identify the networks, possible information that we may have collected about that organization through DNS zones, we've found out what IP addresses, and we're going to scan those public IP addresses to see if we find any hosts that are valid and live on that network. It may be a router, it may be also a specific operating system, or we could have multiple IP addresses that may be bound to a single system. We're not always just isolated to one machine, one IP. There are tons of available resources to help us in this particular phase. Some of these are just regular everyday administration toolkits. We have everything from What's Up Gold, WS Ping, to NMAP, or war pain.